Hey guys, Joe Wanna coming in here with another battle replay for room two. We have a 3v3 siege. The armies on the battlefield today, we have Massilia, Massesili, and Carthage attacking Arverni, Macedon, and Lusitani. Let's quickly get into the army comps. First off, we have um, Massesili over here being commanded by Charlie Sick Zulu. He has brought with him four units of Desert Vigilés. He's got one ballista here, five units of the Desert Legionnaires, two, four units of skirmishers, two units of Desert Cohort, two units of Armored Cavalry, and his Noble General is right over there. He is also currently firing down up, up onto this wall here. He has another unit of his Legionnaires here, and he's got some of his towers on this side with his Desert Vigilés. Next army on the battlefield is Carthage. Carthage is being commanded by Dan. He has brought with him six units of the Libyan infantry, two units of Samnite warriors, two units of noble fighters, three Cretan archers, one unit of pikemen, and his general is a normal general's bodyguard. And the final attacking army on this side, we have Massilia being, ar being commanded by Armored Scarab. He has brought with him six units of axe warriors, two thorax swords, four units of Thurio spears, two hoplites, four units of the Gallic Hunters, and two units of his um, Massilian Cavalry over here. This is being sent in by one of the attackers, I believe Armored Scarbert was the guy who sent in the replay, so Armored, thank you very much again. The defending armies are, be we have Macedon being commanded by Mikey P, we have Arverni being commanded by Dark Ra Darth Raider 999, and Teddy Bear is commanding Lusitani. So let's get into the battle play, battle replay here. I will press play now. We do have the wall over here. Like I said, uh, Charlie is using his artillery here to knock down this section of wall. It is up to 30% here. Charlie is starting to move up his Desert Legionnaires, starting to move some of his towers up. Dan is moving his towers up as well, along with Armored. Shoot over here. We do see a unit of armored's armored uh, desert cavalry over here for Charlie. I believe he came over here to just scout out the woods over here because the one of the players is Lusitani. Lusitani has guerrilla warriors, so it's understandable that he would come over here and just get a little scout out, make sure that there was nothing over here that could be possibly coming in his direction as far as any sort of a sally out or a guerrilla deployment, vanguard deployment, whatever you'd like to call it. St still continuing to get some shots in on this wall. This wall is now to 37%. Let's see if any of the wall artillery... No wall artillery has been fired just yet. Actually, it seems Macedon has, is the only one that has brought wall artillery with him. Uh, we do have a unit of the Lusitani Valeric Slinger starting to show up on this hill, and we can now see a unit of Naked Warriors here for our Verni. And their flag is quickly disappearing again. Let's see... So Armored is now moving up the remaining parts of his reinforcements, bringing up his three units of his archers. He is also continuing to move up all of his towers. Looks like one of his towers, two, a couple of his towers over here should make be making wall land land on the wall here soon. Uh, we have another unit of the Naked Warriors that have shown up. What is this? Another unit of Naked Warriors here. We can also have eyes now on a unit of the Lusitani Spearmen. Did see something breaking over here. Wall is up to 56% now. Thought one of those came in and actually hit the tower. 68% here now. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's still that. Okay. Oh, we do have another unit of Lusitani spearmen here starting to show up for the defenders. Let's see what Elmer, what uh, Charlie's towers are doing on over here. Charlie's towers are moving around. I'm not sure exactly where he's going to come in. As you can see, with all the rocks in the way and the hill and everything, he would only be able to attack right here on this section of wall. Macedon uh, Ballista here is getting some fire in. Still has not really made any contact. All of these units are still full. Hits this tower here. Actually got a couple. Clipped about four guys on that unit. Another big miss on there. Let's see what this wall is up to now. 85%, uh, and I'm just going to say this now so you guys know if you, if you don't know, if you're not aware of this settlement. This wall right here cannot be attacked by any towers, so that's why Charlie is knocking it down with his ballista here. This is a wide open wall. This whole wall I'm pretty sure can be attacked except for maybe this section here and maybe this little section over here, but the rest of this entire wall is able to be uh, attacked by towers, but this very, very choke pointy and the 
with the hill here for where the victory point is this is just an absolute fantastic point for the defenders to put some of their archers or range capability to rain down fire Dan has moved up a unit of his Libyan infantry here and he's actually he's actually having this unit here toss their torches up and are going to start burning down this test this tower which is actually a really good uh, bit of defense really good uh, on the attacking so side uh, Armored has moved up his units of Golic Hunters over here. They're getting fantastic shots on to this unit of Iberian Swordsmen that are just disappearing now. They look like they were down to about 60 men. Celtic Warriors here up by this tower defending the walls. Here's some moving around. Okay! We have a unit of another unit of Iberian Swordsmen and a whole group of naked, naked warriors here just waiting to defend against this incoming tower attack. We have some Militia Hoplites over here for Macedon. Up over on here, I believe these were all Chosen Swords. Celtic Warriors up over here defending as the breach point has now been made by Charlie. So I'm sure that he's going to start moving his troops around. It seems that he has abandoned his towers. So he's probably just going to use this breach point as his way to get into the city here. Another unit of the Thurio Spears here now for Macedon has shown up. A few more units for Macedon has shown up. We have Militia Hoplites, three units of those. Uh, that is a unit of cavalry. I can't tell if that's the Sarissa cavalry or maybe Thessalian cavalry. Naked Warriors are now pulling back from the wall. At least three units of them are now pulling back from the wall. And uh, okay, fight. Ha the combat has now begun over here. We have a bunch of Axe Warriors up here taking on some of the Iberian Swordsmen from Lusitani. Unit of Celtic Warriors taking on some more Axe Warriors. Another unit of Naked Warriors here taking on some Axe Warriors. So, Armored has pretty much committed, he's committed all of his towers here. He's actually got his archers moved up as well. A couple more units of range. We have a unit of Golic Hunters. Another unit of the Balearic Slingers here, so getting some really good fire down onto some of these Axe Warriors here. We have a unit of the Iberian Swordsmen already starting to break. This is another unit of some sort of Swordsmen here. I don't know, maybe that's Iberian Swordsmen as well. So, so far the attack is going well. Armored is making a pretty good push. Actually, he broke that one unit of the Swordsmen that were here. This unit of Axe Warriors look like they're going to come around. Over here, maybe. No, they are just getting pelted, actually. Wow, this really, really well done here by the defenders. But the only unfortunate thing about this section right here is there's no way out. There's no way out for up here for the defenders. So, if anything is up here and it gets trapped up here, it's going to be gone. There's really nothing that you can do as far as the defenders. Uh, swoo, wow, good move here by Dan, bringing all of his Cretan archers up on the wall, up near the walls, getting some really fantastic kills onto these naked naked warrior units. This unit is already down to 52 men. This unit is at 84 men and barely has barely has even seen combat. Let's see. Nine kills for that unit, four kills for that unit, and they are pretty much almost gone off of the battlefield. Oh, we have some of the Macedon archers, Cretan archers moving over here onto this side. Large wall of defense of hoplites here for Macedon. Um, Charlie is landing his four towers here with his desert vigiles over here. Let's see what he's doing with the breach point. Still just moving his forces around up over here. He's probably just concentrating over here right now as these units are moving closer to the breach point. We have a fourth unit. Uh, actually, uh, we have two units of Cretan archers here, two units of regular archers for Macedon. We do see a flag right there. There's a unit of axe warriors here for Masilla that have broken unit of the Lusitani Spearmen. I believe these were the ones that were holding this here. I don't know if that's going to come back and bite him in the butt for not having a unit up here to defend all of these ranged units as Armored is now starting to really push forward. Thorax Swordsmen now coming into some Lusitani Swordsmen. Uh, Lusitani Spearmen, sorry. This unit of Naked Warriors taking on some Axe Warriors. They are breaking, but here comes some more Lusitani Swordsmen, Iberian Swordsmen making their way over to continue holding up on this front line here. Uh, Dan pushing up a unit of his Libyan infantry, taking off, taking on a unit of Celtic warriors, giving an aid to this unit of Axe warriors. Look at this. All of these Celtic... That is such a shame. These guys are so... such a good unit. Such good units, these Celtic warriors. Such good units. Such... I mean, fantastic shock. 
you send in a couple units of infantry, send these guys in right behind them, and activate their ability, and they will just cut things up. Uh, combat going on over here. As I said, the Hoplites are defending against the four units of the Desert Vigilates. Let's see, he's got one unit of Vigilates over here taking on some Militia Hoplites. I see Dan is moving up a couple of units. He's got a unit of Libyan Infantry, Mercenary Samnite Warriors here getting up onto the wall. A lot more now showing up. Okay, so Charlie has started making his ascent into the town here through this breach point, taking on three units of Celtic Warriors, unit of desert, two units of Desert Legionnaires. Golic Hunters here getting some really good fire down onto these. Actually, no, they're missing a lot of these shots. They're really not hitting them very much. I don't think either one of these units... This unit is still 160. This one is at 139, but they are in melee combat. Charlie now using his unit of Desert, Le Desert Legionnaires here to burn down this tower. It's at 74%. So really good on the attacker side. Let's just shoot up over here real quick. We do see some units here in the town center. We have the Spear Noble General, a unit of Pikes, and two units of Thorax Swordsmen. A couple more units of Chosen Swordsmen making their way down this road up towards the front here. A unit of Archers moving their way back towards the town center. Another couple of units of Iberian Swordsmen have shown up as well. And we have another two units of the uh, Chosen Swordsmen making their way over here, backing up these three units of Celtic Warriors. Armored still has a large force. Actually, he's, what's his cavalry doing over here? Ooh! Thessalian cavalry hanging out over here in the woods. Pretty sure that cavalry would destroy his, though, so probably just moving them over here to keep an eye on, see what they end up doing. Dan is making a gigantic push up this center now, actually. He's got a unit of his infantry here, another unit of Libyan infantry moving around. Uh, let's see well, how this push is going on this side. Unit of Lusitani nobles now have come down out of this hill. Another unit coming down. We do have eyes on the Lusitani general noble as well. Coming down over here to make a uh, some sort of a defense here to try and defend against all of these archers. Uh, so, Massilia over here has made a grand entrance into the town, into the settlement on this side. He has taken control over here, basically, the side of this little hilltop. Dan is continuing to funnel units in and around. Looks like he's just basically going to come over and aid, give any sort of aid to Armored and any sort of aid over here to uh, Charlie. Actually, yes, Dan does have a unit of his Samnite Warriors over here. Starting to break this unit of Hoplite. 67 men left in that unit. He also has moved, and has also moved a unit of Libyan infantry over here, taking on a unit of Thurios spears. Starting to have a little bit of a break here, though. Actually, uh, two of the Desert Vigilates that were over here have broken. They are gone. There's another one right here. Dan is starting to move his archers up forward. Let's see how the breach point is going over here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Cavalry from Macedon, we have one, two units of Sarissa Shock Cavalry, Light Shock Cavalry, and a unit of Thessalian Heavy Shock Cavalry. Interesting that they're coming, uh, I wonder where they came from. I wonder if maybe he peeled them, there's a gate here, maybe he peeled them all the way around this back side of the settlement, and maybe he saw that there was really no, no point in getting any sort of an attack in over here, so he's just going to pull them back inside. Charlie noticing this now, he's going to just pull his cavalry back over here. Uh, let's see what he's moving up here. He's got a unit of Desert Legionnaires. They were making a push up over here. Looked like maybe they were going to take one of these towers to get inside the settlement, but they have fallen back. We have a unit of Desert Legionnaires making a way up also here. One unit of the Desert Legionnaires have broken over here. Charlie was successful in taking this tower out, though, so that will definitely be a help for him. Uh, gate is being recaptured here by Macedon, so the defenders still have control of this gate. Dan's still having several units out here. A unit of pikemen starting to move up. He's starting to move up his two units of his noble fighters as well. He's got a unit of Samnite warriors downside. Actually, he's bringing his archers in here now. Two units on this side. One unit onto the side where Charlie initially was attacking. Desert Vigile still holding on, fighting on against two units of militia hoplites. This hoplite unit looks like they may end up breaking. They are wavering here. Let's see if I can get the... They have 29 men left, so that unit may end up breaking. Dan making a big push in here. He's got his two units, Samnite Warrior here, Lib Libyan Infantry here, taking on some Chosen Swordsmen. They were, this unit of Samnite actually were rear-charged by some Militia Hoplites. So this is, a, this is a pretty good fight going on here. This unit is being attacked on both sides. This unit is just facing off against the Chosen Swordsmen. 
Uh, let's see, Libyan infantry making their way in. Actually, this unit of Libyan infantry is starting to get shot down. Mercenary Cretan archers are actually getting shot as well. Hopefully, Dan is going to be able to get these archers out of here as these three units of archers are getting some really good shots here. Starting to see some cavalry now. The cavalry that came in the back gate starting to make their move around. Let's see what they're going to end up doing. I only see two units of the cavalry over here right now. Don't know where the third unit is. We have another unit of Chosen Swordsmen here coming down from this defense in the back lines here. There is the Arverni General. He is making his way out onto the battlefield. Another unit of Thorax Swordsmen here. I'm interested to see where that other cavalry unit went. We have a unit of archers here from Macedon that have pulled back. They were in the group of four here for the archers, but one of the archer unit has pulled back to the town center. Still a commanding presence on this side for armored over here. Actually, he's lost a decent amount of troops. Actually, he's starting to move his cavalry over onto Dan's side, it looks like. Some of his guys are getting really hammered down here, but we do have a unit of the Axe Warriors taking on a unit of Balearic Slingers here. Another unit, Massilian uh, Thurio Spears making their way in. As this unit of, Thur of Hoplites is trying to run away, they're getting peppered down by some of these Slingers. Looks like these units, uh, these two units here have lost all of their, have used, not lost, have used all of their ammunition, so they are forced to come down into combat here. Do see the Lusitani Noble General making his way over here as well. Sicilian Hoplite General making his way over into the city. Uh, Dan has a unit of Libyan, hop, uh, Libyan infantry here, probably just to... Uh, they're facing the, yeah, they're facing the right direction. Maybe he's going to end up using them to charge in over here. Let's just check and see how the breach point is going over here. Okay, so Charlie is making some headway in onto this breach point. He's got a unit of Desert Legionnaires now coming over, getting a big peel of volley into that unit of Thorax Swordsmen. They didn't take 18. Maybe they did. They took 18 guys in that one, one peel of volley here. A couple of units of the Celtic Warriors are now st starting to break. Third unit of Celtic Warriors is starting to break. Armored is now starting to seriously flood some units right in through this breach point. He's got Legionnaires, Legionnaires, another unit of Legionnaires, and a unit of his Numidian heavy, heavy Skirmishers, which, yes, they are just Skirmishers, but if you just look real quick, they have, a, they have a pretty good attack. Their weapon damage is 35, so it's pretty good. Um, and they have a rather high armor. Their, arm is, you know, their armor is 45, their melee defense is 43. They're, so for a ranged skirmisher unit, that is actually a pretty solid unit. Uh, these three units of the Celtic Warriors are retreating back to the town center. And here we have the three units of the cavalry here from Mastodon, probably still trying to scope out to see where a good opportunity would be to attack. So over on this side, this is still... Pretty good combat on this side, actually, Dan has his archers over here getting some really good shots in onto the Lusitani General. This general may end up losing his life on this side. This says the current, you're currently winning slightly. They are fighting against a unit of the Spears and the Gallic Hunters here, but this Libyan Infantry unit probably just waiting for their opportunity to come charging right into combat. More than likely will be able to rout the Lusitani General off of the battlefield. This is quite a battle actually going on over here. Wow, this is, this is, this, there's a lot of guys fighting over here. This is pretty good. Uh, the Cretan archers were starting to move over in this direction. There is a unit of Iberian swordsmen here firing their pilas. Let's see where they're trying to fire their pilas at. Maybe they're trying to hit this unit of Massilian hoplites here. Actually, they are starting to reform, maybe move their position around. Dan has a unit of his mercenary Samnite warriors over here. We do see a unit of Massilian Hoplites taking on a unit of Iberian Swordsmen. That should be a pretty good fight there. And at any point, Dan could charge this unit in to the rear over there. Still making his big push over here by Charlie. Actually, he's bringing his cavalry inside. Let's see, there is a gap here. Let's see if he's going to be able to get this unit of cavalry around this side. Because if he can do that, that would be... That could be really good. The shock cavalry is still right here. No, he ended up just charging this unit of armored calves straight into this combat here. Do have some archers and Gallic hunters moving around. Still the one unit of Gallic hunters up on the hill here getting some really good shots down. Still does have, Charlie still does have a pretty good amount of reserves here. We do see that Armored had moved his two units of cavalry around onto this side. So Armored does, uh, the Massilias really do not have a whole lot of units left. They have a unit of their hoplites here, unit of hoplites here. They still have their general back here and their two units of cavalry. Dan has routed the Lusitani General, or killed the Lusitani General, so he will be moving units up onto this hill. 
going to take out this tower, capture this tower with further defense. This actually might be a really good opportunity. If he moves his archers over here, he might be able to get some really good shots in and give this unit of, in of infantry here a good opportunity to take on some of these Thorax swordsmen. But as we did see back in earlier in, the, in this replay, there are two units of pikes back up here for the defenders, so the attackers will need to, st to save some of their ammunition to be able to have a chance against some of these pikes. Pikes are very deadly. Uh, we have the three units of the Celtic warriors now making their way back down. Cavalry still here for Macedon, just, I guess still waiting for an opportunity, looking for something to be able to attack. Charlie's def uh, attack on this side seems to be, I mean, he's still doing well. He's still taking out units, he's charging his cavalry into this unit of chosen swordsmen now. But he still does have a lot of infantry back here, so I'm not going to count him out completely over here. As far as, I, I have a feeling that he's going to end up being able to take out this breach point and have a commanding, uh, commanding presence over here. This is actually turning in favor now for Dan and Basilia. They are routing some of these units. Throw your spears here. Uh, they are 90 out of 160. Two units of the Iberian swordsmen did take out a unit of Dan's in Libyan infantry here. So these two units are going to be able to have the ability to start doing something. Maybe. Basilian Hoplite General coming in. Another unit of Basilian Hoplites. And Dan is bringing up a unit of his mercenary noble fighters here. But these archers, well placed by these archers, they're getting some really good fire in onto the Massilian general. He's already down to 70 more, 74 men. That is pretty dangerous. Now they're actually giving them back, or flanking fire, I should say, to the archers. That's That could be really detrimental to Armored's army. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of units left, but still, it is a general on the battlefield. He does still have abilities that he could use. Okay, so here comes the shock cavalry for... Macedon getting a big charge in onto these uh, Numidian skirmishers here. So well done there by the Macedonian player. This unit of skirmishers more than likely is going to break. And now Arverni seems to have a rather large... He's got four units over here, not counting the three units of cavalry from Macedon, but Arverni is holding this breach point over here rather well. We, still, we do see these uh, Massilian generals starting to come around. Charlie's generals start coming around over here, Numidian noble infantry. Okay, so these units, okay, so one of the units of the Iberian Swordsman is pulling back. This second unit that was over here has now broken, and we do see the Thurio Spears here now breaking as well. Massilian Hoplites pulling back, now turning, getting a good, good volley there by that unit of Iberian Swordsman. Oh, cavalry coming down. Oh, no. Cavalry coming in, charging into a unit of Massilian Hoplites that were moving, so they were not in any sort of a braced formation. Good charge there. Took out a, probably a decent amount of them. I didn't exactly see the number before the charge happened. Thessalian cavalry now making their way back around over here. We still do have the three units of the archers here from Macedon. Let's see what these two units of cavalry end up doing. Also, back in the background over there, we can see Dan's general starting to move his way around over onto Charlie's side. Combat has now begun on this side. We have a unit of the Libyan infantry taking on... The three units of the uh, Celtic warriors that came back down from the town center and a unit of Thorax swordsmen. Unit of African pikemen have made their way inside the settlement as well, probably just getting... Dan is probably just trying to figure out a good place to place to, to use them. Our Verney general is pulling back from the front line. He has lost a considerable, about a, a considerable amount of men in that unit. And the Chosen Swordsman unit is also pulling back. We have some Gallic Hunters making their way around, probably looking for an opportunity to shoot. Uh, Charlie's attack here has been halted. The two units of Chosen Swordsmen are now coming down to attack them, but I did quickly see some Massilian cavalry making their way into the settlement. They're coming up over onto this capture point. The second unit is making their way over here, just going to crush this unit of Gallic Hunters. Yeah, big charge, just ran them over. Second charge coming over here by some of the... Oh, nope, he pulled them back. That would have... I wonder why he didn't charge them. Okay, he was just forming them up, maybe. Here comes the charge into these Celtic Warrior units, and yeah, immediately, they are breaking. They, they were severely depleted units, they were wavering already. They were really exhausted from their fight, and those three units of the Celtic Warriors have now been routed. This unit of Thorax Swordsmen are being attacked from behind. Their morale is definitely dropping as well. Let's see what else we have. We have Charlie's Cavalry making their way around. And Charlie has now, like I said, I, I didn't really have a lot of... Uh, 
I had a lot of faith, I should say, in Charlie. I knew he, I had a feeling he was going to take this section over here. It is kind of hard to defend over here. It's a very tight area. You have the archers for the defenders that can be up over here. Oh, cavalry coming down. Sorry about jumping around real quick. There are a lot of things going on here. The, let's see, Sarissa Cavalry. Both units of Sarissa Cavalry have charged down into Charlie's Armored Desert Cavalry. This unit of cavalry is caught in the middle here. The Arverny General making his way back down on back down into combat. Unit of Iberian Swordsmen here. Uh, Thessalian Cavalry now coming down. The Chosen Swordsmen pulling themselves back. This unit of Desert Cavalry is going to break. But this unit of Desert Cav is actually holding this unit of Sarissa Cavalry in, in, in combat here. So let's see what these Desert Legionnaires and Cohorts end up doing. I wonder if they still have any Pila left over. Another big charge. Now both of units of Armored Cavalry are over here taking this unit of Thorax Swordsmen out. Wow, this unit of cavalry didn't break. They're down to 14 men. They are still here. Oh, no. Big charge coming down the hill into some of the mercenary noble fighters. They lost one man in that charge. Wow, three units of shock cavalry came down. I know they're light cavalry, light shock cavalry, but still, two men lost on that charge. That's crazy. And here comes Armored Cavalry. Let's see what he's going to try and do. He is chasing down. Actually, one unit of the Sarissa Cavalry is starting to waver. And some really good peel of volleys coming in. The Median Skirmishers doing their job as well, getting some really good peel of fire down into these shock cavalry units, and they are losing numbers quickly. Let's see, Iberian Swordsmen making their way down as well, getting charged into by Armored Cavalry coming over here. These, these three cavalry units are in a bad way. Sarissa Cavalry down to one man, down to six men here. This unit of Thessalian down to 29 men. These three units are broken. Wow, they just broke all three, well... Thessalian Cavalry is still here. Uh, this unit of the Massilian Cavalry is getting shot down by some of the Balearic Slingers. But here comes the Massilian Cavalry getting a charge in on the remaining of the Thessalian Cavalry here for Mastodon. And a unit of the Numidian Skirmishers making their way in. So this unit is now trapped in combat down to 10 men. That unit will be routed off of the battlefield. So wow, really... Really quick, really fast pace so far. I mean, it started out at about a 39-minute replay or so. We're down to a little less than 13 minutes. It, it, it took a decent amount of time, but, I mean, that was a lot of quick, fast moves just happened. Quick, fast. That's weird. Quick, paced combat. There we go. Going on. And it seems that now Massilia has... Yeah, he still has his three... He has his four units left. Masesli is now pushing up a couple of units of his cohort and legionnaires over here to take out these Iberian swordsmen. This probably is not going to go very well for the Iberian swordsmen. Going against legionnaires and cohorts, we have a unit of the legionnaires now moving their way up over here, probably to capture this tower. Another unit of the Numidian skirmishers now taking on a unit of chosen swordsmen. Numidian skirmishers are losing numbers quickly. I think Charlie realizes that he's going to start pulling back from this initial engagement here. Chosen Swordsmen are not stopping. They are going to continue charging down behind, which is unfortunate because Massilia's cavalry is here and is going to get a decent charge, decent flanking charge in onto these Chosen Swordsmen. Starting to lose a couple of their men. Another unit of the Massilia cavalry coming in with another big charge. Chosen Swordsmen now down to 95 men left. Starting, Charlie is pushing up another unit of his desert cohort, actually changing them into their Testudo, attacking Testudo. So they will be well defended here to trail to be able to capture this tower. Dan pushing a unit of his Libyan infantry over here to just back up the legionnaires and cohort here. Iberian swordsmen starting to break on this side. The second unit of Iberian swordsmen will be soon overpowered by these three units from the attacking forces. Actually, Dan is pulling this unit of the Iberian, uh, Libyan swordsmen back. Iberian swordsmen are pulling back, probably in hopes of having the tower, which not, I wouldn't have pulled back. I would have just, uh, it's difficult to say, not being involved in the battle myself, it's difficult to say what would or, what would, or would not have been a good move. Um, but with the Libyan, the Iberian swordsmen up here, they still did have the tower giving them aid now that the cohort has, yeah, they're inside the circle. They are capturing this tower, so that is unfortunate for the defenders. Dan is still moving his archers around. He has his pikemen here. Let's see what's going on. We do have the Iverni general now coming out in front of this rather formidable defense, as I said earlier. 
Don't know why the Arverni General is coming out. He is severely depleted. It is a general. He has abilities. So I don't know why he would be coming out here. Uh, Dan is moving some Libyan infantry over here. Charlie has captured this tower, so the cohort will continue to move forward. We have a unit of the Numidian Skirmishers getting in combat with the no Spear Noble General. Skirmishers did take some pretty good Peel of Valley here from the Thorax Swordsmen. And there are some decent, hell yeah, there's a decent amount of uh, range back here. Bleric Slingers for Lusitani, and Macedon has all four of his archers here in the town center. And the Macedon General here is a shield bearer unit. So this is pretty formidable. Pretty good defense here. Two units of pikes, two units of uh, the Thorax Swordsmen, and the shield bearers here. Pretty solid. Still don't know why the Spear Noble General here for Arverni is out here. I mean, he... It, it, I'm guessing that's the last unit that he has. Still, though, it is a general. He could, you know, bolster morale or use, you know, war cry to break units. Or... I don't know. I don't know. I, w I personally don't like throwing my general away. I'm not saying that this guy is throwing his general away, but that's what it just, it kind of seems like he's using them as a frontline defense when this is a, a fantastic frontline defense right here. I don't know why the Arverni player would put his his general out here. We do have, uh, okay, so we have Dan, Charlie, and Armored all have units around. They have a commanding presence here in front of the two roads that would lead up to the town center here. Charlie is moving up some more of his Desert Legionnaires and cohort up towards the front lines. This unit is still in there attacking Testudo formation. Heavy Numidian uh, skirmishers throwing their javelin in onto the Thorax Swordsmen. And let's see this Pike unit. Pike unit has lost six men. This Pike unit is still solid. Oh, the unit of mercenary Cretan archers are already out of ammunition on this defense, so they have been pushed up to the front line as well. We do have the Legionnaires here un unleashing their... Wow, look at all of this projectiles coming across... This pikeman unit has got to be losing numbers down. 30 men already. Combat has not even really begun yet. Still losing men. Oh my gosh. Did you see that number drop? It was at 130. It's down to 109 now. Well done. Dan has his archers over here getting some really fantastic shots. Now we're starting to have some shots coming back from the Macedonian uh, archers here. Getting some shots back. What are they shooting at? Looks like they're shooting at the skirmishers here. Two units of the Legion, a uh, unit of Legionnaires cohort here, and another unit of cohort. Let's see what's back here. Charlie brought up his African uh, ballista crew, and we do have Dan's general over here. He has held his pikes back, which makes sense. Doesn't want to lose them. But this is this is now becoming quite a problem. Actually, we have a unit of the pikemen here have pulled back 88 out of 160 left. That might not be a good thing, because this side of the line now is com is is really low. One unit of Thorax... Or okay, so they're moving the stronger unit of Pikemen over here to replace the depleted unit. Okay, that makes sense. That does make sense. Pikemen have now shifted places. The depleted unit has moved in onto the left side of the defensive line. The stronger unit has moved off onto the right side of the defensive line here. What do we have moving around? I hear cavalry coming. Cavalry is moving around. Armored is moving his cavalry down onto this side. He's got both of his units of cavalry over here. Mercenary noble fighters here. Libyan infantry here. Another unit of mercenary Samnite warriors now moving up. Let's see where he ends up putting his men. Actually, no. Back from the beginning of the replay, I'm going to say... I think Dan actually sent this replay in. He's as His flag is the one that has the yellow border around it. So I'm pretty sure he's actually the one that sent the replay in. So Dan, thank you for the replay. Sorry about that, Armored. Um, let's see what's going on over here. Desert Legionnaires and Cohort taking on some of the Thorax Swordsmen. Actually, Macedonian General has moved himself up into the battle. Slinger's starting to move down the hill a little bit. They still have... Yeah, they still have ammunition, so he's going to pull them back up. Good battle going on right here so far. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed this battle so far. It's, it's, there's been some tactics, there's been some uh, cavalry charges and everything. I'm still shocked that that one unit of the uh, noble fighters, they didn't lose, they lost two guys on charge from three units of shock cavalry. That was, that was outstanding. This unit of pikemen, though, is starting to lose their, uh, lose their sense to want to fight here. 
They are steady, but it is it is declining. They are losing some more men from this pikeman unit. This pikeman unit down 11 men so far. What do we have moving up? Unit of African pikemen. Dan is moving his pikemen up now. Let's see what he's going to end up doing with them. They still do have their swords out, which makes sense. He's hiding them unless the unless the defender does actually uh, scroll over the unit flag. He won't know what they are because they still do just have their swords and shields out here. Charlie had also moved up his noble infantry up into the main line of combat. We have some skirmishers moving their way back. Dan is... Oh, is his archers out of ammo? It looks like all of his archers are out of ammunition. Do we have a unit of... There was a unit of archers here that were breaking. Or maybe it was this unit. This unit has regained themselves with 18 men left. Still a lot of fire coming down from the defenders. Balearic Slingers are getting some really good shots, and the two units of archers back here still, still firing down onto the front line here. The Midian Noble General just unleashed his volley of Pila. Let's see, they're going to... No, that, they have... Yeah, they still have Pila left. So, okay, so far the defense is actually still holding. The units are becoming depleted. Uh, Pikeman here, 146. This one down to 53 men. Another vo vicious volley of Pila coming in from this unit of mercenary noble fighters here into this front line of Thorax swordsmen. Maybe some of them getting through to these pikemen as well. Let's hang out here, see if we can get a shot of another Pila volley. Oh my good. Wow. They just killed a lot of those Thorax swordsmen. But here we are still. Archers getting shots down. This unit of the Balearic Slingers still firing. These are, I, I don't understand how these guys still have, have ammunition. Like the Blairic Slingers, they have a high amount of ammunition. I'm not sure how the archers still have ammo. They were firing a decent amount up over in the front here. Hmm. Well, continuing on here. Uh, Desert Legionnaires and Cohort on this side. Thorax Swordsmen are being shifted down. So now our front line is a unit of Thorax Swordsmen. Second unit of Thorax Swordsman and the Macedonian General here with the two units of pikes behind them. Still holding. Still holding firm. Little, uh, ten, two minutes and 50 seconds left here in this battle replay. So, I mean, it's the balance of power is absolutely in the favor of the attackers. But the defenders still have a decent force here. I can't believe this unit of archers is still here. They've broken, they've wavered and come back like five times. That is a solid unit of archers right there. Five men still in the unit, and they are still around. General has now blasted both of his abilities, Raise Banner and Rally. What is the uh, influ area of influence, melee defense, and morale buff? Starting to see some of the Thorax Swordsmen here breaking in the front. This is not... This is starting to become a problem here now. The uh, archer unit has broken as well. Depleted unit of Thorax Swordsmen trying to push out onto some of these Desert Cohort and Numidian Skirmishers. Pikemen still standing firm. They are at 51 men here. Sheardbearer General has lost 15 men at this point. Pikemen are down 15 men. This side is worrisome for the defenders over here. Okay, so here comes the Balearic Slingers. They're making their way down, getting a charge in onto some of these Desert Cohort here. I don't think this is going to be a success. Yeah, a minute 40 left. I don't think that the defenders are going to be able to hold this. With the amount, I mean, Armored still has his cavalry. Dan still has his cavalry. Dan also still has four units of infantry back here. Noble fighters, infantry, infantry, and Samai warriors. I don't think this is going to be a successful defense. Dan has also pushed in his pikes here now. So we have a big pike battle going on. The pikes on the Macedonian side are starting to lose numbers. But the African pikemen are losing numbers too, so I don't know. Okay, so here comes the uh, general, the Massilian general now, moving his way in with a couple of units of hoplites from Armored Army. Actually, these are Armored's three units. He's got his general and his two units of hoplites now pushing in, aiding the Numidian skirmishers. African pikemen losing men still. Oh no, pikemen from Macedon are starting to break on this side. This is not good. This is not going to... Oh, the pikes broke. That's going to be the end. Yeah, 40 seconds left in the replay. Good battle. Good battle. That was... that was uh, The defender held. This Macedonian player held here for a very long time. So, Mikey P, good job on the defense. Uh, you were able to bring some of your archers back. Actually, you had all four of your archers back here. They did a fantastic job. Absolutely fantastic job in defending. Or at least holding for as long as you did. They held 
he held here for about uh, 12, 14 minutes, which with the amount of reserves that Dan Armored and Charlie had brought with them, he held for a long time. Macedonian General is starting to break. I just want to gloss over real quick the losses. Look at all of the... I can't... I, I love this part. Just going over, looking at all the dead bodies everywhere. Uh, Dan's General actually looks like he didn't even get into combat. A lot of fighting going on took place over here. And this whole front section of the settlement on this side where Armored had attacked. Just bodies strewn about everywhere. This, uh, this is still... The, the Celtic warriors here just getting annihilated was bad usage. Okay, well, let's get into the army comps here. We'll get over the uh, kills. Uh, we'll start off with Dan's army here, his general, zero kills. His archer's fantastic, 237, 253, 195. Uh, African pikemen, 174 kills. Libyan infantry, 101, 201, 142, 214, 129, and 194. Mercenary noble fighters, 172 and 67, and his Sam Knight warriors, 148 and 139. Charlie Six Zulu. Numidian general, 72 kills. His ballista did knock down that section of wall. Also apparently got six kill, eight kills. Didn't see that. Armored Desert Cavalry doing their job, 49 and 72. Uh, Numidian skirmishers, 165, 112, 202, and 143. Good showing there by the skirmishers there. Cohort, 152, 180. And his legionnaires, 172, 132, 174, 190, 104. And getting into his vigilates, which I'm pretty sure this might have just been a distraction. He just threw these four over onto that side. Uh, 12, 51, 4, and 61. And to Armored's army now, his general with 99 kills. Hoplites, 217, 168. Axe Warriors, 97, 161, 119, 44, 79, and 54. His Thurio Spears, 59, 170, 163, and 85. Thorax Swordsman, 161, 160. His Archers here, wow, 227, 214, 242. Fantastic usage of his Archers here. And the Massilian Cavalry, 53 and 167. Getting into the Defender's Force, this uh, Arverni Spear Noble General, 56 kills. His Archers doing pretty well, 148, 118, 49, and 67. Getting into his uh, Celtic Warriors, 52, 48, 56, 55, 57. Joseph Swordsman, 237. Good unit there. 134, 136, 126. So all over 100 kills. So good job there. Naked Warriors, though, unfortunately were not used appropriately, correctly, whichever, however you want to say it. Um, they are very low. Their armor is only 10. So um, they're not really going to be able to survive against uh, the archers like Dan was shooting his archers into all of these units. Naked Warriors, 76, 64, 6, 13, and 85. Mikey P controlling Macedon, his general, 42 kills. His cavalry, for shot cavalry, really not that great of numbers. 18, 26, and 31. That's unfortunate. He could have probably gotten a lot of kills with them, but it was inside the settlement, so there was a lot of choke points, a lot of units. Hmm. He probably could have gotten get better numbers with them, I'll say that. Uh, into his archers, 103, 89, 137, 113, so good usage with his archers. Hoplites here, 36, 164, 178, 213 for pikes, 171 for this unit. Thorax swordsman, 53, 72, 141, 90, and into his Thurio spear, 61 and 185. And to round out the defenders, we have Teddy Bear, who was playing as Lusitani. Lusitani Noble General, 95. Slingers, 247, 171, 302. Wow, good job with your slingers, Teddy Bear. That was a good job. Uh, Iberian Swordsman takes up the majority of his army, so we'll just go over a quick 31, 25, 27, 51, 74, 83, 20, 93, 14, 36, and 30. That was a lot of Iberian Swordsmen. And getting into his nobles, 139, 182, and his Lusitani Spearmen, 40 and 104. So, good battle, guys. I uh, just want to throw this out there. I am part of the Banksy Generals. Myself, Gorm, Mjolnir, and Ellington Total War, or Lord Ellington. I will make sure to put their YouTube links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and comment. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. And I will talk to you guys soon. Have a good one.